Hey guys, this is Ryan. Today I want to talk a little bit about Solar Assistant and monitoring the Rosie, the Hawks Bay, and the Barcelona. So we've partnered with Solar Assistant to do our monitoring for our new devices. And if you're closed looping with our PowerFlow battery, you'll of course get all of the battery information on here as well, like you're seeing on the screen now. So we're going to jump in this and we're going to explain a little bit about what you need to get, how you'd connect it up, and just give you a brief overview of what Solar Assistant is. There's a lot of really good tutorial videos online that Solar Assistant does themselves. So I'm not going to try to get down in the weeds. I'm going to give you just an overview of their monitoring and give you a couple tidbits of information that I found. So let's go ahead and let's jump right in here. So the first thing you're going to need to do is navigate to solarassistant.io. Um, actually, you'll end up here. Sorry about that. That was one screen off. All right, so you're going to end up at this screen here. And this is Solar Assistant's main website. This is where you're going to create your account, um, and then you're going to also shop for the devices. Now, if you shop for the device, you get the device, you connect to it with the cell phone, it'll walk you through all of the automation of creating the account and all of that. So start, start here. Start by shopping first. So we're going to click Shop. And what we're going to need to purchase to make this work is the device with software, 1.8 gigahertz. So that is $180. That is a lifetime subscription to the cloud-based monitoring and cell phone. So it's a one-time fee. You purchase this device. It looks like this little box up here. It comes with this um, 9 to 60 volt DC power supply. You can opt for the AC power supply, but I really like the DC because if you reboot the inverter for whatever reason, or there's a grid blip, or, 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 you're not... Um, ungracefully power cycling the solar assistant device. It's just always powered from the battery. So this is kind of a nice solution and just connects right up to your battery. Uh, I believe there's actually a fuse in line with that. Um, if not, you might want to put one in it. I can't remember now on mine if it came with the fuse or not, but check that. If there's not a fuse, put a fuse in line. It draws almost no power, so you know a couple amp fuse would protect the line if there's ever a problem. And then you're going to need to buy the USB to CAN bus cable. So the CAN bus, the USB cable, is down here under accessories. And this is the cable you're going to have to buy for right now. It comes with two RJ45s and the USB to CAN term, uh, processor inside here. The solar system device itself comes with a USB cable that looks just like this, but it does not have the CAN bus processor in it, so it will not work. Um, that's a very specific processor in there to convert USB to CAN bus. So you do need this cable. And this right now is probably the most complicated part of your install because you have to crimp this connector onto this wire. So if you don't have the tools to make you know, communications cables, you can probably wander into just about any um, computer shop, local computer shop, any like Best Buy Geek Squad place, something like that, and supply them with this document here and explain to them this is the pinout you need for the solar assistant. And they can crypt that connector on there. But essentially, uh, our J45 has eight terminals. And this picture on my right, where my mouse is, has the locking tab facing down. And we're looking at the terminal side, kind of as shown over here. You can see the locking tab down below. One, two, and three will be empty. Pin four is the white wire. Pin five is the green wire. Six, seven, and eight will be empty. That is your pinout. That is going to be your most complicated part of getting your solar system working, period. Now that you've got that done, the next part is plugging it into the midnight system. Let me get rid of all this stuff over here for you. So every midnight component, if you will, MNGP2, Rosie, Hawks Bay, Barcelona, they all have two CAN bus jacks on them. This particular diagram here is showing an MNGP2 a rosy and a rosy for a stack set of rosies, but you could have a Hawks Bay in the middle here. You could have five rosies. You could have a, a lot of variations. The CAN bus is just a single string of cable from one end to the other, and each end will end up with an empty jack and it'll get a terminator installed. So what you got to do is just pick which jack is the most convenient for you to get at, and you pop the blue terminator out of that jack that came with the device. And you plug your solar assistant right into there, into the MNGP2, into the Rosie, wherever is convenient for you to plug it in. You do not need to worry about terminating the CAN bus anymore because the uh, CAN bus cable does do the termination for you internally. 
whereas there is no second can jack on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So you can, I mean, on the solar system. But that's all there is to it. You just remove one of your blue terminators out of your midnight system, and you plug that cable in, and you're done. Now you've got your hardware set up, and you're going to go back and basically monitor your, your solar assistant. So the one thing that you're going to do before you do the USB to CAN bus cable is you're going to plug in the solar assistant to the DC power. It's going to come on. You're going to follow the instructions that come with it uh, and use the app. Uh, not the app. You just use your cell phone. You connect to it. It'll take you to a, a web page on the device. Then it'll scan for wireless networks, and you tell it, I want to connect to this wireless network. You give it the password, and then you create your account for Solar Assistant, and it merges all that together, and you're good to go. Then you'll just have a like a plant name, if you will, that takes you to your account once you log in. You'll use your email address and your password to log in, but once you do that, you end up with a plant name, like my, mine is SR Florida, and this is what you'll end up on for your home screen. So there is... Uh, some configuration that has to be done. You'll want to follow the Solar Assistant documentation. Once you've done your account and you're at this page here, this page will be blank because there will be no data yet. So then you go to configuration and you'll set up the model of inverter to midnight solar and the USB port. Make sure it's USB 0 for serial and that just automatically selects the port. Then you'll go ahead and plug your CAN bus cable in, plug it into the uh, the uh, CAN bus on your MNGB2, your Rosie, your Ox Bay. And right down here, this is going to say connect instead of disconnect like mine did. So you're going to click connect, and it's going to say connected right here. And then you should be getting data from your solar assistant. If you ever find it's like crashed or locked up, which I haven't had this issue, but if you do, um, that is what you do. You disconnect this and you reconnect it. And that essentially reboots that CAN bus processor in that USB cable. So then once you've done that, you just go back here and go to dashboard and then you'd start seeing your data flow. You'll see here I'm using 1400 watts from the grid. Um, powering my load. I'm charging my battery at about 300 watts from the PV. So this particular Rosie is powering my RV and it is set up for LBX. So I have it set to close the relay and reconnect to the grid at 50% state of charge right here and then reopen that relay at 70% state of charge. So if it's below 50, it'll connect to the grid and it'll stay connected until the battery gets full enough to disconnect and do something useful. So what's happening right now is my AC charger is turned off. The only source to charge the batteries is PV. So when I'm in that range where I've determined my battery is low enough, I'm actually powering the loads from the grid, and I'm letting the solar recharge the battery until it gets back up. There's many, many modes in the Rosie. That's a whole other webinar. I don't want to go down on the weeds on that. But that's what you're looking at here. You'll see that it says it's cloudy here. It is a little overcast. You can see we're only making 350 watts. We've only made 0.9 kilowatt hours for the day and only made 2.1 for the week. And you can click on these things and see you know, more information. Like we can click here and see more granular information, more what's going on. Um, you know, we can go back to the dashboard. We can actually click on the inverter and see things like phase voltages and frequency um, really down into the weeds on all the all the different you know numbers you may want to see. We can go to charts and we can look at you know what's happened over time. We can select what we want for that. You know, do we want the last seven days, two days, 24 hours? You can also zoom in. So what I mean by that is like, let's go to the last two days. You'll see all of a sudden that got, you know, kind of hard to see what's going on, right? But you're looking, maybe we're looking at this dip down here in battery voltage. Like, I wonder what happened right there. And you can just left click and drag your little thing over it, and it will repopulate that. And you'll see that, okay, the voltage sagged right there, and I was drawing a bunch of current up here. Yeah, okay, so that was running off grid is what that was doing because it was in the LBX mode. But it allows you to kind of dig in and do some troubleshooting, right? You might want to look at grid voltage, like right here. I'd be like, gee, what happened right there? That seems like an anomaly in my grid. Um, you know, you can zoom in on that and get down and see, okay, well, my grid actually did dip to 238 volts for a second, which is fine here, but if it was a worst case, you know, something different, you know, maybe you had a little outage or there was some kind of quirk. Um, or there's an event, you can go back and you can look at that data here. So that's kind of what Solar Assistant allows you to do. 
It will um, very soon allow you to do full programming as well of the Rosie, the Hawks Bay, and the Barcelona. But as of right now, it is monitoring only. It does have the cell phone app, as I said. Um, looks just like this, only a little bit more tailored for cell phone. And uh, yeah, just kind of a, a cool little device. Allows us now to get the Rosie, the Hawks Bay, and the Barcelona online. So hopefully that kind of took some of the mysteriousness out of the setup of it, if you will. Um, I believe Solar Assistant has some really nice instructions. I will try to find them and maybe add a link to this video of those instructions as well as anything else specific from Solar Assistant that you would need. But that is, uh, that's the gist of it. It's probably one of the easiest Wi-Fi enabled devices I've ever connected to my network. Um, it was very simple, very painless. Creating the account was very painless. And uh, yeah, it just worked and worked well. So thanks for watching, guys. And any questions, feel free to give us a shout.